Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Cuyahoga County Soldiers and Sailors Monument, I would like to welcome you for this 20th anniversary memorial observance of the terrorist attack of September 11, 2001. I'm Tim Daly, recently retired executive director, and I want to thank you for your, taking your time out of your busy schedules to pause and remember those who lost their lives 20 years ago today. Without any further ado, it is my pleasure to present um, Mr. Greg Palumbo, current executive director of the Cuyahoga County Soldiers and Sailors Monument. Hello everyone. Uh, I want to echo Tim's welcome. Uh, thank you for coming out today in remembrance of 9-11 and the events that happened during the terrorist attack and the subsequent uh, war on terror and the uh, military servicemen who have and women who have uh, given so much to that effort. Um, we will please bear with us today as we have bus traffic that does come through. Um, there are some other events going around town, so um, we apologize for any of that uh, over noise, but we will uh, move forward with our uh, ceremony. Uh, at this time, we'd like to welcome the Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Color Guard and the presentation of colors. Please rise. And now, if you'll please stay standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to now welcome Reverend Dr. Andrew McDonald, Interim Senior Pastor of the Old Stone Church, First Presbyterian, uh, to the podium for our invocation. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious and holy God, creator of, creator of the universe, we gather to remember to remember the tragedies of this day 20 years ago, how people's lives were taken in New York, in Washington, D.C., and in a field in Pennsylvania. We remember the moment our hearts were broken and our innocence was lost, and the alabaster cities that gleamed so brightly were covered with human tears. 
We remember innocent lives lost by acts of terror and hatred. We remember also the incomprehensible acts of heroism exhibited again and again and again. We gather to remember the extraordinary courage shown, the lives lost by firefighters, police, and emergency workers, and the lives lost by ordinary citizens seeking to save, and remember lives lost even in the rescue efforts in the aftermath. We gather to remember because we choose not to forget the courage, the compassion, and the great love shown. We gather here today to share our words of remembrance, but we know that you, Lord, are the one who remembers us into eternity. So we call upon you for guidance and help. We still have so much to learn, and we are not easy to teach. You taught us when we stand praying to forgive. May we learn not an easy, naive forgiveness, but what forgiveness in all its depth means. Let hatred and its offspring not win the day. Give us grace to lay aside all bitterness, rancor, or hatred that we may nurse in our hearts, lest its acid eat into our souls and corrode our individual spirits or our national spirit. Keep us from hearing our own voice alone, but open our ears to hearing the many voices May, may we, in the midst of all those voices, hear your voice and wisdom that will guide us into the future. We ask that you bless those family and friends who still grieve. Bless them according to their deepest need and make us all instruments of your peace. Amen. Now I'd like to welcome back Tim Daly uh, for the presentation of wreaths. Please be seated. The first wreath is for those lost on flight 11 being presented by Deputy Chief Jonel O'Neill, Deputy Chief of Cleveland Division of Police. Flight 175 by Commissioner Nicole Carlton, Cleveland EMS. Flight 77, Commander Nick Phillips from North Royalton Civilian Emergency Response Team. Flight 93 by Major Devin Conway, Ohio Air National Guard. The wreath in memory of all first responders lost on 9-11, Chief Angelo Cavello from the Cleveland Division of Fire. The next five wreaths recognize the sacrifice and service of the past 20 years of our armed forces during the war on terror. Representing the U.S. Army, Lieutenant Colonel Douglas Fullerton, Commander of Cleveland Recruiting Battalion. United States Marine Corps, Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Wong, Commanding Officer, 3rd Battalion, 
25th Marine. United States Navy, Petty Officer, First Class, Stephanie Ball, United States Forces, Japan. United States Air Force, Staff Sergeant, Melissa Green, Enlisted Recruiter, Lynnhurst, Ohio. U.S. Coast Guard, Seaman Mason. At this time, I s invite you to observe a moment of silence. Thank you. Can you hear me? Did we lose it? Hello? I think we lost it. Hello? Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Sergeant Randy Daly of the Pipes and Drums of the Cleveland Police. I'd like to invite now Reverend Dean Kavoras, pastor, Christ Lutheran Church, Cleveland, and chaplain for the Cleveland Police, Fire, and Emergency Medical Services as our keynote speaker. Thank you for the invitation to address you in this memorial and tribute for the victims and responders of the events that took place 20 years ago today. Let me begin by defining uh, our gathering first in the negative and then in the positive. First, I sincerely hope that we have not gathered today for merely vague sentimental reasons, or God forbid for a national day of self-pity, because that would gr give great joy to those who still day by day have proven themselves to be very much our enemies. 
nor have we gathered because we necessarily approve of the way the attack against our nation has been answered by our leadership over the last 20 years. So why have we gathered? We have gathered for noble reasons indeed. Firstly, we should know that this remembrance is different than previous ones in that a new generation has come of age in the last 20 years. A generation that may lack the knowledge, understanding, and the zeal that we possess for the love and the defense of our liberties. Part of our task here today is to let them know by our example that freedom is not free, but that it is indeed very, very expensive. They must learn that what was written down on paper 245 years ago is in danger of perishing in every generation unless it is staunchly defended with our blood, sweat, and tears, and above all, with the will to prevail against every enemy, foreign or domestic, that would curtail our God-given freedoms in any way. We have also gathered here today to remember the thousands of innocents who died and the bereaved who still suffer every day. We are here to assure them that their loss is not forgotten and to let them know that the milk of human kindness swells within us still. We convene today as well to let the world know that we will always respond when our people are threatened and that when duty calls, we will go. We come together today also to pay tribute to those who answered the call 20 years ago those who ran headlong into the peril and who sacrificed so much for the sake of others. Victim number 0001 at the World Trade Center was none other than 68-year-old uh, uh, FDNY chaplain, Father Michael Judge, who sacrificed so much for the sake of others so that he could minister to others. I can also testify to the mighty dedication that was elicited from all of you when we first comprehended that war had broken out on our own soil. Our first thoughts went to our loved ones, but having the vocation that we do meant that we had to leave them behind in order to protect others. And they, in their own breathtaking act of valor, said to us, go, and we went. Attending to the work with a vigor we did not know that we possessed, standing guard over our city with our own bodies, for no one knew where war would break out next or what might be required of us before the day was over. We remember the alarm of the following days, the anthrax, the crazies who came out of the woodwork, the freeway snipers. And while others gained a modicum of stability with time, we remained on the highest possible alert and had no time to think about our own well being because we did not enter the vocation we have to serve, to be served but to serve and to expend our lives for others. I can personally attest to the dedication of the people who operated in Pennsylvania, New York City, our brothers and sisters in the military and safety forces, who gave their all to the recovery efforts, who breathed in the dust of their fellow human beings 24 seven until finally in July 2002, the labor at New York City was complete. I witnessed members of agencies from all over this great nation converge on Pennsylvania and on New York to do their duty to God and country. Federal, state, local safety forces, 
the FBI, ATF, NTSB, U.S. Marshals, Military Reserves, National Guard, local constables, the Pennsylvania State Police, members of the FDNY and NYPD, members of DMORT, and airline disaster response teams. In addition, there were teams, uh, a whole army of private medical people, doctors of medicine, chiropractic, podiatry, dentistry, to name a few, physical therapists, massage and mental therapists, who before the clock struck 12 were already in their cars plunging into the perfect storm. Also breathtaking to behold was the army of private engineers and contractors with the skills, knowledge, and array of equipment needed to tackle a rescue or a, a recovery effort of this magnitude. Absolutely breathtaking. And let us never forget the selfish, uh, selfless volunteers outside the scenes uh, outside the scene to offer encouragement, consolation, prayers, food, drink, clothing, and to meet every possible human need, all in support of the endeavor. Nor must we forget the myriad of American citizens who lined up outside Red Cross offices to give blood, or the parents, grandparents, clergy, teachers, and neighbors who consoled the troubled and comforted the young to make sure that they felt secure. It felt for all the world, dear friends, like the old America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, when every American sang from the same songbook. And what a feeling it was. And like they did in that bygone era, Many people turn to their faith for solace and for answers. Everybody wanted to talk to the chaplain, to hear a word from scripture, obtain a blessing, and to begin their shifts with prayer that they might obtain spiritual strength to face the sadness and the danger. It was an uplifting and liberating time when people again understood what King David says in the 46th Psalm, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I recall one incident, working third shift at Fresh Kills, that is the name of the covered uh, garbage dump on Staten Island that was used to sift through all the debris, searching for human remains, for evidence, personal belongings to return to grieving families. <clears throat> About two in the morning, an eagle-eyed NYPD detective glimpsed the badge going over the edge of the sifter and then disappearing into the rubble below. All work ground to a halt, and that badge became the focus of an intense search. When it was found, Another intense search ensued, this time for the chaplain, whose presence was urgently, uh, urgently requested because everyone had gathered there and wanted more than any other thing to have an impromptu and immediate funeral service for the fallen Port Authority police officer whose badge would soon be returned to the family. It is not the kind of thing they prepare people that they prepare you for in seminary. But the divine word did its work that night and for many more, healing the wounded souls of those who risked their lives, their health, their safety, and their sanity for the love of their fellow men. Based on such devotion, we have also gathered today as American citizens and as Cleveland's military and safety forces to rededicate ourselves to the same valor, each according to his God-given vocation. In this, Jesus is the best pattern, who says, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. 
I have called you my friends. Following the example of his perfect sacrifice, we devote ourselves anew to the daily task of saving life and property, relieving pain and affliction, and restoring those in danger to normalcy. I hope too that we have come together for one other important purpose, to reclaim the blessings of liberty. American citizens are not the perpetrators here, but in the last 20 years, we have been treated as if we are. We have lost large <clears throat> swaths of our privacy, which is an essential element to, of liberty, to say nothing of the greatly diminished freedom of speech, of movement, and of other important liberties, all under the guise of security. And dear friends, this is intolerable. In addition, we have learned in the last 18 months that we need not only defend our Constitution and our liberties against enemies foreign, but also enemies domestic. We found out that our nation is populated with far too many dictators, petty and grand, who are positively delighted to run the lives of others. Some at the doors of retail establishments feeling like Brutus having his way with olive oil, Popeye nowhere to be found. Others in plush offices tweaking on an unprecedented adrenaline rush, a once in a lifetime bonanza of newfound power to meddle into the affairs of everyone. Oh, the demagoguery. Oh, the virtueless virtue. America is their oyster. But fellow citizens, America is better than that. And that is what I hope we will learn today, that America is better than that. Lastly, we have also assembled this day in hopes of gaining a degree of closure if possible and the power to move on if we can. But that does not mean that we will forget but instead may this 20th remembrance make us 20 times stronger, 20 times more resolved to rise to every challenge and to meet it with courage. God grant us the grace to do that and to know a brighter future in which we are ever vigilant, ever courageous, and ever free. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Reverend, uh, for that remembrance of not only those who have fallen, but those who rose to the call. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Ted Parse, Pro sorry, <laughs> Ted Prosse, like I don't know him, uh, president of the Cuyahoga County Soldiers and Sailors Monument. <laughs> Thank you, Greg, and thanks to all of you for coming and helping us remember, because that's what a day like today is for. Uh, we're approaching America 250, and our history is almost littered with dates and events. It calls us to remember, to remember the people that served and those that sacrificed. I want to thank, first of all, the representatives of the police department, Emergency Medical Services, the Civilian Emergency Response Team, the Air National Guard, the Fire, the Army, the Navy, the United States Marines, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard for being here and helping us remember. Because you see, memories are kept in places like this behind us, but they're also kept inside. And their memories not just of the event, right? That serves as a marker, but it's a memory of the people the individuals who were called upon and gave, whether they gave all or whether they gave something. And it's that service that we're called upon to remember today and pass on to the next 
generation. I'm old enough for the time between Pearl Harbor and my birth is less than the time that we now stand from 9-11-2001. Yet for me, those dates that were before I was born were just that, they were dates. They were stories that were passed on. They didn't, I didn't know the people. At best, I knew them after the fact when I heard the stories. I was lucky enough to be at Pearl Harbor for the commissioning of the John Finn, a story that goes back to D-Day, I'm sorry, to Pearl Harbor, and to remember those moments. Today, I have an opportunity to help you remember what happened on 9-11, remember to the individuals, remember what they did, what they stood for, who they were, and indeed, who they never had a chance to be. When you walk inside this monument behind me, on the outside you see this monumental grandeur of a national event that defined a generation for all time. When you walk inside, you see individual names because each of them had a story. Each of them served, many of them sacrificed all and all sacrificed something. We've heard taps and we'll hear taps more that arose from the Civil War. It was a bugle call to let people know that the end of the day was here. And we've turned it into something else. But when you do, as you walk from here, remember what the words were. Day is done, gone the sun, from the lakes, from the fields, from the hills. Rest in peace, God is nigh. Rest in peace. Thank you all for coming. I also want to thank Tim Daly, who stepped out of retirement to volunteer his time to organize this. Uh, after 12 and a half years, I think what really happened is he knew there was a day of significance, and somehow he couldn't just stay in the stable. He heard the fire bell ringing. So we thank him for that, and Greg Colombo. Greg, you want me to just turn this over to Dr. McDonald? Thank you again for putting this on and remembering in this way it is such an important, such an important day. The philosopher Edmund Burke wrote, all it takes for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. I think there's a lot of truth in that, but he missed the deeper biblical truth. All it takes for evil to triumph is for good people to do foolish things. What we're trying to do is gather together and remember that it's important for us to do intelligent things. In that, let us seek God's grace. Let us pray. Lord God, help us to remember, but more help us to learn. Keep us from all foolishness and lies and prejudice and hatred of the other. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. We pray for our nation. We pray for our president and the Congress and the courts for all who are in authority, order the unruly powers and grant us your peace. Lord, open us to your unconquerable love. In the words of the great theologian Howard Thurman, we pray, Lord, open to us light for our darkness. Open to us courage for our fear. Open to us hope for our despair. Open to us peace for our turmoil, joy for our sorrow, strength for our weakness, wisdom for our confusion, forgiveness for our sins. Open to us love for our hates. Open to us yourself for ourselves. Lord, open to us a world reborn in your grace and love. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. I ask you all now to rise for the playing of Taps by John Young from Buglers Across America.
Thank you, John. I'd also like to thank Mary Louise Jessic Daly for her help today uh, running around, as well as our staff, uh, Rachel Zembo and Shane Doyle. And I would like to turn it over now one last time to Tim Daly for his remarks. Again, thank you for taking time to pause out of your busy schedule to remember today's significance. Historians are custodians of memory. And as we go forth, may we remember that which has been said and done here today to the glory of God. As a physical remembrance, we're going to provide each of you a white rose. Take this rose home. Put it somewhere safe. And when you come upon it, just pause and remember. That's all we ask. We would ask that all military and first responders who are present and assisted with our ceremony, please come forward. We would like to get some organized photos so that we can share with all of you our remembrance of today. So thank you again. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you.